Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is ministering with power and authority. For more than a year, Jesus had healed diseases and cast demons from everyone who came to him for help. The people, and especially his disciples, were amazed at all they saw him do. A significant transition was about to unfold that the disciples did not anticipate happening. Out of the disciples who were following him, Jesus chose 12 men to become his apostles. He called his disciples and chose from them 12 whom he named apostles, Luke chapter 6 and verse 13. The word apostle or apostolos means to be a messenger more specifically, it is one who is sent with a message to deliver. While Jesus chose 12 apostles for special training, there are more than 70 people in the New Testament who are called apostles. At this moment, Jesus chose 12 for special training. Eventually, these 12 were instructed to help all the new disciples learn to do what Jesus had taught them to do. And by the time we come to Luke chapter 9, we discover the reason why Jesus chose these apostles. This is how Luke introduces us to this transition. Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. These words are so radical, it's going to take a minute for it to sink in. Let me say it again. Jesus gave them power and authority over all demons, and to cure diseases, he sent them out to heal. What a radical shift. From this moment forward, it was not just Jesus who healed people. All 12 of the apostles were given power and authority to heal the sick, just like Jesus did. Notice that Jesus did not send them out to pray for the sick. They were given power and authority to cure diseases. There is a big difference between praying and curing. Uh, the root word for cure is therapy. It means to heal or to cure. Not only were they given power and authority to cure, they were given power and authority to cast out demons. I don't believe the disciples saw this transition coming. It was easy for them to believe in Jesus because when he spoke, miracles happened. Jesus made it look so easy. Now the disciples needed not only to believe in Jesus, they needed to believe in themselves. By saying they needed to believe in themselves, I don't mean that they could heal, but that rather that God was willing to use them to heal diseases. Many people believe that God heals, but have much more trouble believing that God is willing to use them to heal others. I went through that same struggle myself. I was educated to believe that healing was not for today. I was educated to believe that miracles stopped with the apostles. Then God sent me around the world to see what he was doing. He shifted my focus from my world to his world. He shifted my focus from the narrow-minded education I had received to show me that in the kingdom of God, healing never stopped. I met people in Asia and Africa who were healed in the name of Jesus. Then I met followers of Jesus who were walking in the same power and authority that Jesus gave his disciples to walk in. When they speak, people are healed. When they speak, demons leave. I learned what they learned. I learned to believe what they believed. I learned that to not walk in healing is to deny the power and authority that Jesus gave his followers. I was taught that power and authority was only given to 12 apostles. 
not to the rest of the disciples. I was satisfied to think that I did not need to heal. I just needed to believe that Jesus healed. But that is not what Jesus came to do. Jesus did not come to show us what he could do. Jesus came to show us what we can do. That sentence changed my life. And that is why this program is called The Life Jesus Modeled. You too can learn to do what Jesus did. Healing is not a gift as much as it is a privilege. God is willing to heal through anyone who understands their identity in Christ. Uh, Jesus sent the his apostles to cure diseases. That is an identity statement. Try saying it with me. I am a curer of diseases. I am a curer of diseases. Some may think that is an arrogant statement to make. But Jesus does not feel that way. We are who he says we are. To not think of ourselves the way he does is to dishonor him and to rob ourselves of all that he created us to be. I heard a teaching that changed my life and the powerless ministry that I was leading. What was this teaching? Well, first Jesus modeled healing. Then Jesus gave power and authority to the 12 apostles to model healing. Here again what Jesus said, Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to heal. That was just the beginning of Jesus' plan, not the end. Next, Jesus released power and authority to 72 disciples to do exactly what he empowered the 12 to do. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1, after this the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two to every place where he himself was about to go. The 72 were given the same power and authority as the 12. We read the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. Finally, from the 72, power and authority was given to every new believer who became a follower of Jesus. In giving the Great Commission, this was Jesus' was Jesus' instruction to the disciples. Teach them to obey everything I commanded you to do. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. The word obey is the word taro. It means to honor, to confirm, to observe, to obey, to do. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14 and verse 15. Learning to heal is a mandate given to every follower of Jesus. Jesus instructed his disciples to teach all the new believers to do everything that he had taught them to do. Nothing was to be left out. Jesus said, you can do what I can do. What I can do, you can do. What you can do, all the followers of Jesus can do. That's what he said to his apostles to say to the new believers. This understanding has changed everything about my life and ministry. I am now doing what Jesus said his followers can do. And you too can do everything he said that his followers can do. What did the disciples do with the power and authority that had been delegated to them? Luke chapter 9 and verse 6 says they departed and went through the villages preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. What a tremendous statement. Where did Jesus intend for healing to take place? The answer is simple, everywhere. I have discovered that it is usually easier to heal people outside of a church building than inside of many church buildings that I have been around. Uh, very few people are being healed inside churches 
because there's so much unbelief in most churches that healing cannot be released. Most of the healing that Jesus did took place outside of religious buildings of the day. Jesus sent his apostles out to meet people in villages, and wherever they met sick, they healed them. I have learned to heal people wherever the Lord takes me, on streets and shops and offices, and especially on public transportation. Wherever people are encountered is a good place to release the power of God into their lives. Jesus usually released the power of God before he preached the message God gave him to bring. Try doing what Jesus did. He healed people without asking them religious questions. I frequently pray for people from other religions. And when I offer to pray for people from other religions, this is what they say to me. Let's see what your God can do. What a wonderful response. I want to people to believe in the power of God long before they understand the message of God. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. But let's take a few moments and pray for sick people right now. Whatever you have going on in your life, we want to ask God uh, to heal you in this very moment as I speak to you. I'll take a moment and pray for allergy sufferers. Maybe you're suffering from terrible allergies, pollens or food allergies, and it's affecting your lifestyle. Let's command your body to stop reacting negatively to the uh, allergies and pollens that have been affecting your life and causing you to stay inside and lose so much joy and happiness. To release the Spirit of God upon you right now to heal you. We come against sinus infections. Sinus infection, go in the name of Jesus. We come against all types of cancers today, especially throat cancer. Throat cancer, be healed in the name of Jesus. Let your voice box be restored so that you can speak clearly and be understood by people. We come against breast cancers now in the name of Jesus. Just recently, so many people have asked me to pray for b breast cancer, and we pray against breast cancer. We command those cancerous spots, those tumors, to shrivel up right now and for you to be healed, to live a healthy life. Just feel like there's some elbow problems that are going on that God wants to do something about. Just put your hand on your elbow. Whichever one is hurting you, your left or your right, doesn't really matter to me. And just feel heat, the presence of God coming upon uh, your life. Maybe you're suffering from carpal tunnel syndrome, some things that are happening that you're losing the grip of your hands. Uh, maybe you're a musician and you can't play uh, like you used to be able to play. You're needing to wear a brace. I just command your carpal tunnel syndrome uh, to subside and for your strength to come back into your hands, uh, for the flow of your energy through your body to go the way it's supposed to go. Come against foot neuropathy. You're losing feelings in your feet. If you have foot neuropathy, just shake your foot right now. Just shake your right foot a little bit. Shake your left foot and just feel, feel some tingling. Feel the presence of God coming upon you, releasing healing into your body. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you for healing that's happening right now. You've just been touched by the Lord. Message me. And we'll continue to pray for you and trust God for your healing, your complete healing. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.